So we are recording this. If anybody is um, does not want to be recorded, um, your name will probably show up. Your um, all the questions are going to be on the chat. So if you haven't opened your chat on your um, browser, you probably want to do that. Um, please keep your video um, off and I, I just to reserve bandwidth because I'm not I'm not sure how that works. And keep your and stay muted. And then um, we will. Um, if you have any questions, you can type them into the chat box as we're going along. And then um, Genevieve will. Um, Genevieve will write them down, and then we can address them um, as we're going. So when it's time. So. All right. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Uh, I know this is really challenging times. A um, couple of things. I am very technologically challenged. I've never done this before. This is the first time on Zoom. So Lauren is here to help me. And um, Genevieve is here. Say hi, Genevieve. Hello. She's probably doing some dishes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I came back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then Lauren will be helping me with technical things. Lauren um, runs the Maui Hero Project in the Paia Youth Community Center. And we, yeah. do, um, we do a lot of teaching together, teaching kids and stuff. Hey, one thing, David, I was wondering, um, typically if you don't subscribe to the Zoom uh, app and we're limited to one hour for the free? Um... No, I have a subscription. Okay, great. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. So yes, we're recording this and um, and keep your microphone and your video off if possible. All right, let me see if I can figure out how to do this. Let me start share screen. Okay. Can everyone see this? All right, let me see here. That's right. How do I make this bigger? Lauren, how do I make this bigger? Um, Side. Lauren, you can just play. Play, that was, we tried that before, I remember, and it was a, it was a mess. Um, you can try to, yeah. Pull that window up and to left, and then pull down the corner. Let me try play. I think this um, oh, didn't. This didn't work. On the upper left corner, it says Zoom. Why don't you increase that? There we go. Like Thank you. Ha! Great. See, that's why he's here. All right. Um, this there's some kind of glitch with this um, with the software, so. We're just figuring out as we go. Anyway, um, I'm David Bruce Leonard. I'm an acupuncturist here on Maui. I've been here for a long time. And um, this is a really, obviously a really challenging time for everyone. So I'm going to um, run through my thoughts and ideas about, um, about what we're facing and possible ways to navigate it. I apologize for the glasses. Um, I cannot see without them properly. So, I'm, and I'm the glare and the the lighting in my bunker is substandard. So, um, that's just where we're at. I wanted to um, start out by normally we pule before a class, but I wanted to start out to, by talking about um, or mentioning my teachers and the people that have, have graced me with their um, their knowledge and wisdom. Um, these are the people that I've been blessed to have studied with. Um, Auntie Helen Walrath. Harry Mitchell I never studied with, but he was, um, he was definitely in the lineage and I, he died just before I got a chance to meet him. Kahukavika Ka'olakea, Kaipo Kaneakua, Uncle Bill Kanekoa, Joe Hamakua, Kumu Ding, Ka'ohelani Silva, Kyoki Souza, Auntie Alice Kululoyo, Auntie Rachel Kanikoa, Auntie Nani Safri, um, 
This is, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say the Chinese because I will butcher it. This is um, Joanna Zhao, Jeffrey Pong, Sharon Fong, uh, Richard Liao, Lucy Hu, and John Ye, and Lama Tarchin Rinpoche, Lama Karti, Bill Kip, and okay. my sensei who's anonymous. And um, my gratitude goes out to the people who have mentored me, Victor Chris Janer, Stacy Gus, Ed Fell, and Gordon Becker. Um, so these are the people. These are um, these are my cultural ancestors. These are the people that, through time, have helped me with what I'm doing. And we also have um, blood ancestors, genetic ancestors. And I want to take a second, and rather than doing a pule, I'd like us to just take a second and think about all our ancestors that came before us who have, um, have really come through things like what we're going through hundreds, if not thousands of times in the past and much more difficult than what we're going through. And um, I just wanna take a second and to think about them and to honor the sacrifices that they made so that we're here. I mean, in some way they're successful because we're here. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So um, we're in a, in a situation where this is completely unknown. This is a totally new illness. No one knows which natural <laughs> remedies, if any, will help us in the situation. We're all just making educated guesses. We're just guessing. I'm an acupuncturist, I'm not a scientist, and I'm not a physician. None of what I'm gonna tell you is a recommendation. All I'm gonna do is tell you what I would do with myself and my family in, in circumstances like this. And there's an old saying, half of what I know is wrong, but I don't know which half. And that's especially true today. So I'm just gonna put it all out here. And I just want people to understand this is your responsibility to do your own research and come to your own conclusions. I'm not an expert in this. I'm just, um, I'm just studying it and I have ideas and I'm just putting them out there. And you'll need to come to your own conclusions of what to do for you and your family. Um, obviously, when you're dealing with plants, you need to know what they are and where they've been. Um, so you don't wanna use any plant that you're not 100% certain of its identity and thoroughly acquainted with its uses. 99% is not enough. You need to absolutely know when you're picking a plant what it is and how it's used. And if you have any questions, find somebody to help you. Send, send, you know, send people pictures or have somebody there, a kupuna or an, an expert that can help you identify plants. Uh, be aware that everybody is different. And I've seen plants, I've seen very innocuous plants cause very radical reactions in people. So. Um, so just be aware of that. Um, if you have any unusual reactions to a plant, stop taking it and get professional guidance. So what can you do? Obviously the same things everybody's been talking about, social distancing, washing your hands, and really stay at home. Don't go out. Um, if you understand the way the math works, the way exponential curves work, every day that you, 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 every day that you go out and mingle, that is exponentially dangerous for many, many people. So, there's a lot of questions about hand sanitizers. What I found most useful about hand sanitizers is to use is just regular alcohol, um, the kind you drink. Hang on, I'll get a bottle. This is um, called Clear Spring. I don't know if you can still get it. It's probably sold out. This is 95% alcohol. It's 190 proof. So if you want to figure out the, the percentage of alcohol in the liquor, you take the proof and you divide it in half, okay? 
So the best, the sweet spot for killing viruses is about 70 to 80%, about 150 to 160 proof. Anything over 80%, this is just my understanding, is um, will evaporate too quickly. And anything under 70%, 65 or 70, is just not as effective. Now, 80 proof or 40% alcohol will kill this virus apparently, but it takes a long time. It takes, it takes a while. You can use vodka in a pinch, regular vodka, 80 or 100 proof vodka, but you're better off again using, um, using something stronger. If 80 proof is all you have, you, then use it, but isopropyl alcohol, rubbing alcohol would be better. It's just that it's a carcinogen, so I, don't, I prefer not to use it, but that will work. Um, yeah, the two brands here in Hawaii are Clear Spring, which is 190 proof or 95%, and Everclear, 75%. So if you, use Ever, if you use the clear spring, what you'll do is you'll dilute it 20 to 30%. Oh, by the way, I'm gonna offer these slides afterwards so you don't have to memorize or write this stuff down. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make all, all the stuff available to you and, um, and the formulas that I'm gonna give later. Um, so yeah, so you can do the math and figure it out. Um, adding water, you, may add, you have to add water to clear spring and um, uh, unless, unless you have something that's already like Everclear is already 150 or 150 proof, which is 75%, so it's perfect. You can use it right out of the bottle. Of course, soap will also work. Um, and hydrogen peroxide will kill coronaviruses very well, but it takes a long time to work. So you can do some research on the web and. Um, you could probably mix it with aloe gel or some kind of gel to thicken it to make it stick longer. Um, yeah, so that's a possibility. So what else can you do? We can exercise, we can eat good food, we can breathe, we can move, we can watch the way we think, and we can use touch. And this is not just hippie crap. This, is, this stuff is real. This will really boost immunity um, and it's measurable and you can, you can research that stuff. Exercise is really important, um, not only for, for the mind, but also to boost immunity, to increase resistance. Um, it, it keeps the telomeres long, which keep us from aging. Um, it's intimately involved in our immune system. So, you know, you can use um, cardio, muscle training. There's, there's all kinds of science behind this. So, just because you're like me and you're terrified and hiding in a bunker doesn't mean you shouldn't exercise. So I've been going out and, and hiking up the, the roads in Kula and it's been quite great. Diet, diet, we're gonna get more into this later. Diet is really important. Um, specifically fermented foods, things like kimchi, um, kraut, miso, yogurt, things like that are really important to, um, to boost your immune system. Our immune system comes from our gut and, and other places too, but specifically our gut. So um, I, I recommend cooking food, but that's your call. Um, really avoid junk food. Sugar will drop immune response very quickly. And um, just, just try and eat really well. And if you can eat raw foods, make sure they're sanitized. I will take my little alcohol sprayer. I had, had a burrito the other day and the woman when she was making it had her, wasn't wearing gloves and I was paranoid so I, or concerned or sane. So I opened the burrito and I sprayed it with my little alcohol sprayer here. I sprayed the food before I ate it. Um, I'll let you know how that works. But the, yeah, the nice thing about this, about the, the ethanol is you can drink it, you know, you can spray it on your food, it's completely edible. Breathing, breathing is at the core of, um, of health and, and it's really underestimated. So doing things like Qigong or yoga or the Russian practice of Buteyko, um, just make sure you're breathing deep, breathing into your belly. And um, yeah, and it's also really good for, uh, for many, many, many things, including going from a triggered panic state to a parasympathetic state, to a relaxed, comfortable state. What I will use is this, um, this here. 
it's a little um, breathing exercise and it restricts, um, it restricts oxygen flow. Now, obviously, if you're sick, you don't want to use this, right? So don't take We're getting don't a little use this if you're sick, but if you're feeling good, and um, it's, it's available on Amazon for like $30, but um, you can control the, um, the amount of air you're taking in. It restricts the airflow. And I bought it because there was a study that I saw on the web about six months ago um, where they gave this to people and they had them do it for like 10 minutes twice a day. And within like, I think a month or something, they lowered their blood pressure by 10 points, their, their systolic blood pressure. So it's really, um, really amazing. Um, and it's simple and it's, it's painless. So I would recommend getting one of these and starting to increase your lung capacity. This also moves lymph, which helps detoxify you. There's all kinds of things. Okay. Movement, exercise movement, but cardio, weight training, the things we mentioned before, walking and hiking, just getting in nature is, um, you know, can, the Japanese have something called, called nature bathing, which is real. They've shown boost immune response and has all kinds of benefits. And your mind. So try not to think, do, or say anything that it disempowers you or others. I have to control myself on Facebook because I get a little angry at our, our governor here. But um, yeah, and, and keep that to a minimum. Exercise, meditate. Um, exercise is actually quite good for depression. It's, it's clinically better for depression than Prozac, which I guess is not saying a whole lot, but um, so yeah, connect to your friends on Skype or Zoom. If you're anxious or depressed, we call it square breathing. There's, there's hundreds of different kinds of ways to breathe, but square breathing is where you breathe in for four, count of four. Let's do it together. Breathe in for four, hold for four, exhale four, hold for four and repeat. Um, this is what's used by special forces guys when they're in combat and stuff, but it's a way to keep your um, adrenaline from overwhelming your body and that can, it's just really good for you. And, and as I said, get in nature. If you have a partner that you're in contact with, let's give each other massages, hug, make love, you know, do all those things. And if you're socially distancing or you're alone, um, then you can, there's, there's all kinds of ways to massage yourself. And this is not to be underestimated either in terms of boosting immune response. Um, on the, 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 the most powerful acupuncture points are on the tips of your fingers. So you can zip your fingernails together. You can massage your hands, massage your feet, um, do belly massage. I have a, a brush and I scrub my scalp in the shower. I read a study once that um, said that, um, yeah. Um, we're getting some feedback for the last couple minutes. I'm not sure if you had uh, recently put in your headphones or maybe the proximity to the, but uh, we're getting some like echoing feedback. Is that better? Yeah, it seems okay. like it. How about that? Much better. Thank you. Okay. Um, so yeah, self-massage is really good. And, you know, I, I read a study once in rats that didn't, when you massage rats' heads, they have you know, reduced incidence of stroke. I don't know how that works, but a friend of mine is a physician, says there's a physiological reason for that. So I have a, a body brush that I scrub my scalp with, and um, I've scrubbed off most of my hair, but hopefully I won't get a stroke. Um, stay home if you can. Um, an N95 mask. If you have one, it's great. If you can't, you know, they're saying that the surgical masks don't do anything. I don't believe that. I, mean, I can feel the air going in and out. So anyway. Yeah. Is that you? That's you guys. Yeah. You need to keep your mic off, I guess. Yeah. Could everybody uh, check your microphones to make sure that you're on mute, please? Okay, I think it was Miles. Okay. So um, when I was coming back from Asia, I was coming back from Asia at the end of January. Um, there was 70% of the people had masks on at least. Um, 
we, uh, my friend and I, we had our, our, I had two surgical masks. Uh, the one on the outside was soaked in oil with essential oils and I was eating garlic sandwiches. We were eating garlic sandwiches and um, the essential oils, my understanding is that the essential oils I know will kill this virus are bay leaf oil, rosemary oil, and lemon balm, Melissa oil. Now other ones probably will too, but those are the ones that I know will kill the virus. Um, you don't want to get them on your skin because they'll burn. Um, zinc lozenges. If you've had contact with people, take zinc lozenges, not tablets. You, they need to be lozenges so they coat your throat. And they, as my understanding is these are shown to block um, viral um, viruses from getting into our cells. Um, if they have elderberry in them, it's okay. There's some controversy about elderberry right now, but that's fine. And uh, we're gonna be making our own lozenges here soon. And once uh, we figure out how to do that, we will do another thing to show you how. Okay, other things. Um, we always think of this, this disease being caused by a pathogen, which it is, but pathogens infect some people and not others. And we wanna be the others. So rather than thinking of this disease that comes in and gets me, we can also think of what am I doing to keep the disease from getting me? And it's a, it's a, it's a bit of a different focus. And, and Chinese medicine is very, very um, is famous for, for having this, this approach to things. Um, this is what's called host resistance, okay? So things like medicinal mushrooms, herbal formulas, there's a, there's a formula called Jade Screen called Yuping Feng San and, um, or Astra C from, you can get that, you can look it up on the web. Those are things that I think are really good to take to prevent. I'm also gonna give you regular formulas later that I use to prevent um, illnesses and pathogens. There's some evidence that melatonin might help. Now I'm not saying it does. So you need to do your own research because melatonin is a powerful hormone. Um, but I'm convinced that, well, I'm not convinced. I'm taking it myself at night. Um, yeah, just do your own research and make your own decisions with that. Um, there's, yeah, there's a bunch of reasons why melatonin might help. Um, there's, I, have a, I, and I don't have a slide for this, but there's a dilemma between, um, so the, the way the virus works is it, um, it actually uses our immune system to cause damage. So if it's using our immune cells to cause damage, then do we increase immunity or do we slow down immunity? So I'm gonna get more into this later, but it's this, this the model that we have of understanding the immune system is, is very um, inadequate right now. So every time you, you, know, you quote unquote boost immunity, people are saying that you might be increasing the problem. And um, that's not my take on it, but we'll talk about more about that later. Vitamin D is really important. Um, there's all kinds of studies about vitamin D. And again, this could be wrong. I could be wrong, but this is my take on it. Um, I think it's good to keep your vitamin D levels between 50 and 80 um, what, mol, mil, moles per milliliter or something. I can't remember what, what the measurement is. Um, you definitely don't want them under 30. Um, and there's a, lot of, there's a lot of epidemiological history behind this and stuff. Um, you can get your vitamin E tested at this website, everlywell.com, and you can do it at home. I think it's like 70 or 80 bucks. It's worth doing. Um, this is one of the most important things I think in terms of all the things we're talking about to help us would be to keep our vitamin D levels at an optimal level. Now it's also toxic, so too much can be dangerous. So it's good to get checked, but the chances of us having too much I think are slim. But if you're not sure, get checked. And in China right now, they are using IV vitamin C officially. That is their recommendation. Um, Vitamin C, if you, you can't take, the, the amounts they're using are huge and they put it directly into the, into the veins. Um, you can't take that much vitamin C because you, you get diarrhea. That's called bowel tolerance. 
Um, and that's also a way of treating um, certain illnesses. You give somebody five or 10 grams of vitamin C and when they get diarrhea, they're saturated. I have heard that there is a liposomal form of vitamin C. And uh, that when you, uh, it, the, what, what happens is they take the vitamin C and they wrap it in a lipid and a fat, and that allows more into the body. I think that's a really good idea. So um, ideally, if you could get IV vitamin C, if you were ill, I think it would be great, but it's very expensive and hopefully none of us will get ill. Um, some people are China, in China are using sesame oil to, to line their, their nose and throat. Um, you can look at this, this research. I don't know if it works or not, but um, it's something to consider. And um, I'm trying to keep my oral care up. There's a, um, I use a product called, um, from Dental Herbs Company, Tooth and Gums Essential Toothpaste. And they make, they make a toothpaste, a mouthwash, and a, um, and a condensed um, irrigant concentrate, which I'll use in a water pick. So I would really recommend doing that. Number one, because um, gum disease can really take immune system, can take it down quickly. And also because I, these essential oils could conceivably block the virus from implanting. If you find yourself experiencing symptoms, take a zinc lozenge, okay? I would consider doing a hot water steam inhalation. I got a little tickle this morning. I felt like something was going on. So I got a big pot of hot water. I took some rosemary oil. And this has also worked really well for me when I've gotten bronchitis. It's amazing. Um, you've got to get the herbs to the tissue. So you have to think about when you're using plants, how do I get them to the tissue that, that needs them? And in this case, it's the lungs. So you get a big thing of hot water, and my kupuna would do this with, uh, with, with herbs, and they would put the herbs in, make a tea and stir it, and cover yourself with a towel and breathe. Um, but you can, use, you can use bay leaves, because bay is one of the, um, one of the herbs that um, is reportedly, reportedly kills the virus. But also um, essential oils, a couple drops of essential oil, and you'll feel it in your lungs, and it'll, it'll cleanse. It'll, it'll, yeah, so, and, and if these oils do kill the virus, they could conceivably kill the virus in your bronchi. Now, this is unlike SARS, which, which COVID-19 is unlike SARS, that, um, which replicated in the lower part of the lungs. This replicates in the upper part of the lungs. So, oh, something I forgot to mention is um, tapping the chest, massaging, things like that. Any kind of vibrating or shaking will help boost immune response. Um, yeah, so you can add essential oils. Another thing you can do is, um, and this is a Chinese approach to um, when you have, first have signs or symptoms of an infection, like a, a, a flu or a bug, is to make yourself sweat. So what I'll do is I'll take a, um, I take zinc, but also take a big cup of ginger tea and I will um, sit in a hot tub and in a bathtub and cover myself with a towel and drink it and break a sweat. And I don't know how this works. I, I suspect there's something, there's something in the body that, that is verifiable with this mechanism, but this is my take on it. Uh, I think it's a good idea. Okay, so there's something, we're gonna go a little more into this later, but there's something in the body called a cytokine storm. And apparently the way COVID-19 damages the body is it, um, it, infects, it infects the cells in the lungs, the immune system responds, then it infects the immune cells and makes them go crazy. And the immune cells start acting, acting up and then the body starts attacking everything in the area. So it's like chaos in the, in the, in the, in the ranks. And this is what causes the damage, you know, the, the ground glass um, things you may have seen on those x-rays from China. This is what destroys people's lungs. So that's called a cytokine storm. And again, another caveat, I don't know if any of these things work, but my research, oh, so, so that pathway, excuse me, the pathway is called, that triggers the cytokine storm is called interleukin-1-beta, okay? 
And my searching on the web, this is, I've, found, I've found studies that say that broccoli sprouts, not, not broccoli, but, uh, broccoli probably also, but broccoli sprouts may reduce uh, interleukin-1 beta. And um, these are the, the sources. You can look these up yourself if you're, if you're wondering about them, the references. Um, broccoli sprouts have something called sulforaphane in them, which is a, um, which is a chemical that appears to slow the aging process. We have at the end of our chromosomes telomeres. And um, the longer the telomeres are, the longer we live. And as we age, the telomeres will get shorter and shorter. It's like a cap on your shoelace and um, the, the thing on the end of a shoelace. And then uh, when the telomere goes down, the, the chromosome breaks apart and becomes not viable and then the body tries to kill it. So you wanna keep your telomeres long and sulforaphane has been, um, has been um, studied and apparently it keeps the telomeres long. So does actually mindfulness, interestingly enough. And um, anyway, okay. Also quercetin. Quercetin is very inexpensive and it's safe. And you can buy this, it comes from plants. And um, a lot of our Hawaiian medicinal plants have quercetin in them. So you can take it as a supplement and um, I'm taking that. And also moringa powder apparently will reduce uh, interleukin-1 beta, that pathway. So, um, okay, so this is a, there's always a conflict between tradition and science. And what I try and do is I'm trying to do both. I'm trying to look at the Chinese traditions the way I was trained, but inform that from modern science and put them together. So in terms of tradition, actually, why don't we, why don't we stop here and um, field questions? Okay, all right. Uh, let me so, see if, um, and hang on. Let me stop the sharing for a second. I know that's a lot of information. Thank you for being patient. Uh, questions. Okay. So the most recent thing that came up um, that we might need clarification on is just using the bay leaf or using the oil in a steam bath, and maybe we can just talk about that process, um, how to create that for oneself at home, and what herbs or oils we should use. Well, those are the, those are the herbs that I mentioned. Um, mm -hmm. I would, yeah, I would, you, you don't want to use essential oils directly on your skin because it will burn. You need to put them in a carrier oil and I'm not an expert in essential oil. So I would, um, I use them in esteem, but I would, um, I would do some research on the web for that. And uh, I'm just telling you the, um, the, um, my understanding is those herbs will kill the virus and there probably are a lot more. Next question. Okay. Um, another question from Janine, which plants have quercetin inside of them? Well, there's a ton of, there's a ton of foods. I will get that list for you. There's a, there's a list of like a hundred foods that have quercetin in them. I know the one that comes to mind right away is Uhaloa, which is um, the Waltheria. We're gonna go into that a little later, okay? Okay. Great. Um, okay, we're getting quite a bit. Right, so they're asking um, from Marsha a question, would we cook the broccoli sprouts to eat them or can we eat them just raw? I would suggest going to foundmyfitness.com. Foundmyfitness.com. And uh, you can eat them raw, um, but supposedly I think there's a temperature that you can increase the sulforaphane and I think it was 160, but I'm not sure. So you can look that up. I just eat them raw. They're so tasty either way. <laughs> um, and then also from Marsha, she's wondering if fasting is an okay way right now to boost immune immunity. Is this a good time for that practice? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Um, and then Emma Z and probably a few others are very curious about why elderberry is getting a bad rap. Oh, um, why to avoid it? So yeah, I, I don't. I'm not convinced that um, they should be avoided, but I'm um, just to be safe. I'm erring on the side of caution. The theory is that because elderberry increase immune response, 
that they could exacerbate a cytokine storm. But herbs will modulate the immune system. And I, I, I can show some scientific references. It says, so modulation means that if your immune system is in excess, it'll bring it down. If it's depleted, it'll bring it up. And there is one study that I've seen with elderberry that says it modulates immune response. But just to be safe and to keep myself out of prison, I'm going to not recommend it. So, yeah. Okay. Good. Any other questions? Um, Yep, and then there's one more. Um, Doug is asking if you're familiar with CBD modulating cytokines in the immune system. No, but I've heard marijuana does that, reduces the inter one, uh, the um, interleukin uh, one beta pathway. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that and I've read that, and apparently that is true. I, I can't vouch for it for sure, but that's my understanding. Um, so in that way, would immune modulating products be considered uh, safe? I can't guarantee that. I'm just telling you, I don't know. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. And we're going to go over my specific herbs. Okay. Let's go back to, um, let's go back to the show here. All right, so there's always this, this tension between tradition and science. So in terms of tradition, this is how Chinese medicine sort of classically views um, how we get, or how the phys physiology and the, and the pathophysiology. So the Chinese knew there was something out there that was going from person to person. They didn't know what it was, they called it wind, or they called it evil chi, you know? Um, then of course, now we know these things are bacteria and viruses, okay? That transmit um, disease. So from a Chinese perspective, we have this, this like 20 different kinds of qi, but these are the three that I'm focusing on today. There's protective qi, which they call wei qi, and that runs just under the skin and it keeps us safe from pathogens. It's like a barrier. That's why when you cut yourself, you can get an infection because your wei qi has been broken or interrupted. There's digestive qi, which is um, spleen qi or ying qi, which is our gut flora. And then there's our foundation qi, which is kidney qi. And that's our core health. So when all the things we were talking about before that you can do to help yourself, the massage and, and all those things, keeping your mind calm and eating good food, those all increase your qi. And the more qi you have, the more resistance you have to pathogens. Okay. So from a scientific perspective, the, what, we're do, what I'm looking at, and this is just me, is, um, this is, again, this is all speculation. I'm guessing, totally guessing. But I can give you the references if you email me on where I'm guessing from. Okay. Um, I'm focusing on preventing the viral attachment. The, so the, the, the COVID-19 virus will come and it, it has to get into a cell and a virus will get into a cell, hijacks the cell's um, DNA. It, it, a virus is just a, it's just a, this virus is just a bundle of RNA wrapped in fat with protein spikes around it. That's all it is. It, it cannot reproduce on its own. It uses our bodies to reproduce and viruses have been, been with us since the beginning of, beginning of life. Um, the ocean is like filled with viruses. They're everywhere. 17% of our, our genome is viral. I mean, viruses are amazing. And some of them are helpful to us and some of them are harmful. So, But this specific one, what it does is it, it, it focuses on an ACE2 um, site on, on each cell in the lungs. And um, these herbs, the Bicol skull cap, ginger, licorice, Japanese knotweed, horse chestnut, and turkey rhubarb are all reported in the scientific literatures, at least in a test tube, I don't know if it works in the body, but in a test tube to, to block, uh, to protect the ACE2 um, node on the cell, okay? There are drugs that do this too, pharmaceutical drugs, which I'm not qualified to talk about. 
Um, you, these are the common names. You can look up the Latin names you know, on the web, and this is what I recommend doing. There's, they've also found a, um, it's called a furin enzyme site on cells now, um, where the virus can also attach to, to use that site to get into the cell that apparently is different than an ACE2 node in the cell. Um, and these are in different parts of the body also. So I don't know of any, I, I haven't found anything yet that will block there, but hopefully something will come up. Another thing that um, I've been focusing on is, so if you can keep, the, if you can make the cell strong enough, you can keep the virus out. So these herbs, some of the same ones as the ACE2 protectors, will also apparently keep strength, keep the cell integrity strong. And those are Bicol skullcap ginger, licorice, Japanese knotweed, rhodiola, and isatis. Okay. And then there's um, things that prevent the interleukin-1 beta cascade. And what I found, again, I'm not sure, but the, the Hawaiian plants that I've found are Godicola, Uhaloa, Honohono, and Kinehi. Now, I have no idea if these work in the body or not, but this is what I'm looking at. And as far as I know, these are all very safe plants to use. I'm not guaranteeing it, but this is my take on it. So, and I'm going to get more into these herbs later. We're going to go into these in detail. Okay. So, so Western medicine doesn't really have a theory of, of how to increase health. They only have, they treat disease. They're disease hunters. And we need that. That's awesome. It's really important to hunt down diseases. But Chinese medicine, this, one of the strengths of Chinese medicine is it, it doesn't ask, how do we cure this disease? It asks, how can we make your body stronger? And the conclusions of the Chinese is that we can use adaptogens. So the plants I'm about to um, go over are plants that, that grow in Hawaii. I'm not gonna go over any Chinese herbs because I want us to have resources here um, to be able to use these. And again, don't go putting things in your mouth unless you know what they, what they are and you know where they've been, right? So the first one is um, Pepe Yao. This is a fungus. Pepe Yao means ear and auricular means ear, auricularia means ear, and they call it wood ear. The Chinese name is mu'er, which is wood ear. These are, these are actually edible. They will thin the blood, so you want to be careful with them. But they are, um, these will boost, uh, these would be used to increase the, the qi in the body, the wei qi. And you'll find them on rotting logs, and they're very rubbery. And they actually, they're rubbery just like an ear. So. You can ask your kapuna about those. Um, oh, aloe is not an adaptogen. Oh, I'm going to delete that. Boink, never mind. Um, Bacopa monieri. This is called ai ai in Hawaiian. This is Brahmi. This, um, the Chinese don't think of this as an adaptogen, but it apparently is. It, it tastes terrible. Um, it's used for, um, it's used a lot in Ayurveda. And um, it grows by the ocean, and it's also, it's, it's easy to cultivate. It's one of the native plants. It's very easy to cultivate. It tastes terrible, but this is something to consider to strengthen immune response. Uh, go to cola. This is um, one of my favorite, um, one of my favorite plants. Um, this one, this other lookalike, so make sure you're identifying it correctly. Uh, make sure you know what it is before you pick it. And it's edible. Um, now, we've got rat lungworm here, so you want to be careful eating things out raw. But um, I was just making go to cola pesto. I had it in the freezer to kill any pathogens. And I took it out I I because um, I wanted to use it fresh. And so I froze it, defrosted it, and just made a pesto out of it. It was really good with um, turmeric olive oil. So... Um, this is really, really awesome stuff. I, I can't, I can't speak highly enough of this. Now you don't want to take this if you're pregnant or you're on pharmaceutical blood thinners. That's really important. So, um, and I'm including some notes here from my. These are notes from my um, wild crafting certification that actually Sherilyn created. Thank you, Sherilyn, for her student project. Um, 
but uh, these are not ready for prime time. I just had them and I thought if I'm gonna give you these, this is a PDF, um, you can, you'll have the information there. So these are the notes from, our, um, from one of our courses. This is Job's Tears and the Chinese use this um, as they, you can use, different parts are used differently, but I use the leaves as a strengthener and the Chinese say it builds chi. They taste good, they taste very sweet. You can get a big bundle of them and um, boil them up and drink the, drink the water and it's very good. And it, it's sweet and it's, um, the Chinese say it boosts the energy, it boosts your core strength. The notes for that. Noni is really good. Noni is, um, now I, I put it in the category of a, as a chi tonic. That's um, not, the Chinese don't talk about noni fruit. They, they use the root for infections, but um, this is quite a good adaptogen and I would, I would definitely take noni um, if you wanted to increase your chi, strengthen your chi. Oh, preparations for that. I know people are gonna ask about preparing it. Um, you know, you want it ripe. Um, I like the paquet style where you put it in a jar and let it, let it just ooze out. Um, some people don't like it. You can, um, the, my, some of my Hawaiian teachers would put it in the sun. And it's, I think it's almost like pasteurizing it from, from UV rays. Um, yeah, I mean, I think you can, you can get the powder. I, I tincture the powder. I buy the powder and I tincture it. Um, you can eat it raw. It's an acquired taste, but I, I don't mind it. I find that I, um, I will, um, I will put it in the fridge and then it's easier. Auntie Nani used to use it. It's very good for blood sugar and diabetes. Auntie Nani used to put it in her zip bottle and she'd take like one of those old sports bottles with a straw and she'd take three zips three times a day. So. Um, Hala fruit is uh, the Chinese consider a chi tonic. My kupuna never used this, but this is what it looks like when it's ripe. And um, this is really good. I will take these and I will take them when they're ripe like this and I will boil them in a big pot of water and um, get a lot of them. You wanna fill it, the, the pot with, as much as you can with these and they kind of float like that. Boil it for a long time because it has um, oxalates in it which can, um, which can be irritating. And um, uh, uh, somebody I know once drank two huge quarts of the, I left it in the fridge and they drank, it tastes so good she drank two huge quarts and then got a herpes outbreak. So, so the oxalates may have, may have triggered the outbreak, it's my guess. I've never heard of that happening, but so make sure you boil it well and don't drink two quarts. Don't drink a half gallon of this stuff. Um, rose apple, which doesn't really grow, it's not here anymore so much. There was a pathogen that wiped it out, but the Chinese use the skin of the rose apple as a, as a, as a, an, an adaptogen or a chi tonic, um, really good. I don't know, um, they were quite invasive and they all disappeared from some blight, but um, they might come back, so. Medicinal mushrooms are great. I, um, you can go to Paul Stamets's um, site or Aloha Medicinals has an excellent company. Uh, I think they're in Nevada now, but they were originally on Maui and then on the Big Island. Um, they sell, um, polysaccharides from different kinds of mushrooms. Um, these are shelf fungi. So as far as I know, and I've talked to two different um, mushroom experts, mycologists, there are no toxic shelf fungi, but still I would be careful. There's a lookalike of this plant called, I can't remember the name, that looks almost identical to Trimedes, and I gather them both, and I use them both the same. Um, you're probably not going to gather enough of these to, to use medicinally in it for serious strengthening. So my patients that are very sick, I recommend that they buy things from Aloha Medicinals or from Fungi Perfecti or one of those companies. And um, I'm not sure if these are immune modulators. I believe they are. The chemical is called beta-glucans that's in them. But um, you can research that and make up your own, make up your own mind about that. Um, Paul Stamets probably has a lot to say about COVID-19, so 
he's the mushroom guy, the main mushroom guy in uh, North America. Um, there's another picture of Trimedes. The, um, the Taoist, the Chinese call it Yunzhu, which means cloud wisdom or cloud. The Zhe is the, um, I, think the I think it's, the Zhe is the spirit of the kidneys. And so it's cloud spirit. And it's to, they said that you would make the body light and you could like bounce like, like a cartoon character. You could float through the air with this, with these, um, these fungi. This is technically not a mushroom, it's a shell fungus. So. Okay, so those are things you would do to strengthen the body. These are, and these are, um, yeah, and again, there are a lot of Chinese herbs that are used for this too. Um, I, you know, a lot of these have not been studied in depth. So we don't know if like, if how strong they are or whatever, but these are, these are my conclusions from, um, from my research of what the Chinese say we have here that are, would be chi tonics. Um, so you start to get sick. Um, so you release the exterior. What the, the Chinese would do that traditionally, I said the ginger in the, in the hot bath with a towel, you wanna to push it out. I also really like zinc, as I mentioned. Um, zinc lozenges. But these are the herbs that grow here in Hawaii that you might use to release the exterior to cause a sweat. Uh, lemongrass is awesome. It's, um, yeah, it's just really good stuff. You can eat it too. Uh, you can use banyan roots. I've only, I've never given, given this to a patient. I've only done it a couple of times on myself. It was okay, the area roots. I know the Chinese use this to release the exterior um, to, to break a sweat. Is it, it's called diaphoresis, it's a diaphoretic. Um, I've never done this, but my Chinese research says that they use the flowers, the melaleuca flowers as a diaphoretic. I've never used them. Uh, mulberry, I'm sorry, this is mulberry leaf. Uh, different parts of the mulberry are used for different things, but the leaf is used in Chinese medicine for sticky phlegm in the lungs or to help push pathogens out of the body. Oh, this is not supposed to be the fruit. This is my bad. Um, anyway, this is not the fruit on here. It's not the hala fruit, it's the hala root. Do you know the area roots that are on hala? Never seen those, they look, the, the um, Hawaiians call them ule, which means penis. They look like penises hanging down. But you can take those area roots, and let me get a picture here. Hang on, I apologize, I have to go into my chambers here and find a picture of Hala. This will give me a chance to breathe too, I'm gonna roll. Okay, here we go. So these are the area roots. See that? So you can you can see what they're called ule, right? So you can uh, you can cut those off and um, chop them up. I use a, a saw and then boil them and then drink that, and that is used to break a sweat also. Um, this is elder again. It's your call if you want to use it or not, but this is, um, now I'm not recommending this plant and I'm not recommending you do this, but Stephen Buhner, who is one of the main herbalists um, in the United States, in North America, actually in the world, um, he is, you know, so traditionally you only use the flowers and the berries because um, the rest of the plant is poisonous. Well, He's coming out now and he's saying that, and I'm not suggesting you do this, he's saying that you can boil the leaves and, and detoxify it and use the leaves um, for as an antiviral. So um, yeah, just FYI. And of course, ginger, right? Ginger is like awesome. 
for causing a sweat. Um, yeah, good. So those are the things that when you first get sick, you would want to take just to push things out, to, to uh, push out, metaphorically push the, back, the, the pathogen out. So now these are things, if, if the illness goes deeper, and this is not just COVID, this is any, any illness like any flu or um, cold that you get. You wanna use antimicrobials and anti-inflammatories, okay? So um, this is um, maidenhair, Eva Eva, maidenhair fern. This is a native. Uh, this one's not native, but there are native maidenhairs. And the, um, they're used for lung infections. And I've never used this with a patient. I've only just played around with it myself, but I know they make a syrup out of it in France for coughs and for the lungs. So you would wanna probably research that yourself. Um, Spanish needle, it's called Kinehi or Biden's Pilosa. There's another one called Biden's Alba. I think this is actually, no, it's a Pilosa. I think, yeah, they're hard to tell apart, but they're used the same. The main way you can identify them is these needles. This is actually showing a lot of promise with um, COVID-19. So it's one of the herbs that we have here that is definitely up on my list of things that I would um, consider using. Um, potentially as prevention too. There are native um, Bidens, but that's not what we're talking about. These are the aliens one and they have the needles. You can see them there. And um, Papa Henry on the big island would pull the plant out and shock, put the roots in boiling water and shock it and then hang it up and then pick the leaves and the flowers and then use that as tea. Um, he would gather, he would wait to gather when these white ray florets had fallen off, but I don't think it's necessary. I mean, I, I don't do that. I just gather it up. Um, but this is, yeah, this is a plant that it grows all over the world. And um, it's, it's, it's quite an amazing plant. It's an edible and it does all kinds of things. So um, I really like this. Uh, as you can see, it does all kinds of things here. It's, it's liver protective, antimicrobial, anti-inflammatory. So, turmeric. Um, this is an ornamental turmeric. No, my turmeric flowers are actually white, but this is the only photograph I had. Um, turmeric is also showing promise. Um, I make a turmeric, I, I, on my YouTube channel, I make a, there's a video for how to make turmeric olive oil, which we use as food here. Um, I no longer use coconut oil because uh, in, internally because I read a study that said it increases LDL cholesterol, the bad cholesterol, so I avoid it. But um, yeah, but this is something that turmeric is really good. Um, yeah, I find that if I eat too much of it, uh, my eyes will get dry. It'll dry my eyes out a bit. So uh, this is Desmodium. It's called Pua Pili Pili. And we probably have all had these stuck to our socks, these the little hitchhikers. This is also a uh, antimicrobial that's used in Hawaii for infections as a tea. And uh, all of these are tea, by the way, it's prepared as tea. Um, this is, um, oh, I didn't put the name down here. I apologize. This is Elephant Opus. I'll put it in the. Um, would you spell that elephant and then opus? Put it in the chat, capital E, elephant opus. This is uh, quite the weed and I, I, have, I don't have much experience with this. I will use it as antimicrobial and I'll, I'll, I'll take it myself, but I don't know a whole lot about it, but it's just one of the antimicrobials in, that grows here in Hawaii that I, that I use. This is a hediotis. Um, I don't know if they changed the name of this or not. It's a little creeper. You'll see it in the cracks of the sidewalk. Um, this is a, a pretty good antiviral. I have no idea if it works on this virus or, or even um, coronaviruses in general, but it was used in China a lot when the HIV first came around and they were using it um, as an antiviral. 
St. John's wort is reputed to be an antiviral. This grows over in Waimea on White Road. And um, I don't know if I've seen it on Maui or not. I think I must have, but um, it's, it's it's tiny, and this is this is one species of Hypericum. It's also used for depression and other things too. This is a Lepidium. I wish I had a better picture of this. This is um, these these are actually edible. They're used in China. There's native uh, varieties of this up on the Saddle Road in uh, outside of Hilo. There's these are growing between Hilo and Kona. Um, not this species, but other ones. But it's called Swinecress. Really good really good um and this also is in the chinese research that's coming out of china they're using this for um covid19 so i don't know but and it's it's very safe it's a brassicaceae so it's in the brassica family um yeah good stuff uh lepidium oh it's the same one this is the same one it's called swinecress this I also didn't mark. This is a honeysuckle, and this is the one of the, this is the one of the herbs the Chinese are using all over China for COVID nineteen. They're using it with in, in with in paired with another herb called um, lin, um, this is lanicera or honeysuckle. The flowers. I wouldn't use any other part of the plant besides the flowers. And the other one is um, forsythia fruit. I'll show you these later on in the slides. Forsythia. This is a polygonum. It's also called um, Persicaria. Um, and later on in the notes, I, I give you both of these. Um, they renamed it, but this is our local version of the Japanese knotweed. And the Japanese knotweed is definitely um, being used all over China for COVID-19. This is not the same plant. I use this. I feel really comfortable using it. Um, has tannins in it, but um, my understanding is it has one of the chemicals in the um, in the Japanese knotweed is called resveratrol, and this has a lot of resveratrol-like compounds in it. So, um, or has I don't know about a lot has resveratrol-like compounds in it. This is purslane. This is one of the few foods that we eat that's antimicrobial. Uh, it's a volunteer in gardens and um, really tasty. Um, definitely clean it before you eat it. Don't eat it just out of the, straight out of the garden uh, because of rat lungworm. Um, but this is called machishan in China. And um, it's called akulikuli in um in Hawaii and awesome stuff, really good anti-inflammatory. This is Prunella vulgaris, it's called self-heal or shakutsau. This is a pretty good antimicrobial, it grows, um, it grows at elevation, it grows up in Haleakala on, along the road, it's a little mint, doesn't smell. It also grows in the Big Island at, at elevation. Um, and this is, um, this is used for sore throats. I haven't seen this reference in the Chinese literature for COVID-19, but um, it's, it's good to know about. And the Chinese will, um, apparently they harvest it after it's started to turn brown. It's very interesting. I would think you'd want it when it was purple and beautiful, blue and beautiful, but apparently they harvest it later on. Um, oh, why don't we pause now and field questions? Yeah, we'll take a break. Or why don't we take a five minute break and come back and field questions? Everybody okay with that? Yeah, great. All right, okay. we'll leave you, leave you with seated. Okay, cool, thank you. Five minutes.
Is um is Doug here? Still, I wanted to clarify a question. Okay. Well, we almost got a full house. Great. <laughs> How many of the of us are there? Uh, there was 87 that signed up. I'm not sure how many we have here, but yeah, great. Okay. okay. Um, um, so if so I need to slow down or whatever, just let me know. Yeah, if um, yeah, if you need to slow down, you guys can just um, type it in there if you want to clarify yeah. something. Um, and then, so if Doug is around, um, go ahead and send me like a text, like "Yes, I'm here," because I wanted to ask you about your somebody's um, question. somebody's mic is on. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, <clears throat> this is um, 
called field mallow or huang huang mu. This is cedar rumbifolia. This is quite an amazing plant. Um, it's a it's a very good antibacterial. I don't know if it's antiviral, but it's a really good antibacterial. And um, it also has a chemical in it that your brain makes when you fall in love. Um, phenethylamine. So phenet phenethylamine. Phenethylamine. Yeah. PEA. So um, my students call it the love plant. But um, this is a quite a good antimicrobial. I would. This is. Um, I can't remember whether it's gram positive or gram negative bacteria. I'd have to look it up. But um, but it, it's quite the weed and. Um, and uh, yeah, very. It's one of our one of our best antimicrobials in the islands. This is um, Puulele. It's Sonchus. It's called Sal Thistle, and it looks like a dandelion, but it's not. Um, you can see the leaves come uh, will come up the stem. See a dandelion here. You have um, you've got the. The leaves have what are called a basal rosette. So the leaves are at the bottom and then you, a dandelion, you have one stem coming up in a flower. With Sonchus, which has very similar flowers to dandelion, um, there's leaves climbing up the stem, but they're both, they're used interchangeably and they are um, pretty good antimicrobials, specifically for lung infections and really good at um, the um, good for the liver and um, they're good cholagogues. They increase bile, um, bile production and bile secretion. And this is Usnia. Um, it's called Umikoa or, or the beard of koa. There's another one here. This grows, it's a lichen. And the way you identify, this is, this is an exceptional uh, lung herb. Now I have no idea if it works for this, but it's really exceptional when you when you uh, it's a lichen, and when you pull it off the tree, it has like a core. So if you pull a strand of it apart, there's a little thread inside. That's how you identify it. Um, this is best prepared as a double extraction, so it's a little complicated, um, more than I want to get into now. But um, you can do it. Um, yeah, you can do if you're tincturing this. There's specific ways to do it that will optimize it. Um, and again, the Native Americans called this the lungs of the planet. Um, I would be careful on the Big Island gathering this because this will accumulate heavy metals. And if you're downwind from the volcano, I would just be cautious. Um, they use this as a biomonitor for, for, um, for heavy metals. So, that, so if they want to find out how much pollution is in an area, They'll they'll test this plant and they can because it absorbs heavy metals and stuff. So so be cautious with it. I would consider buying it from the mainland rather than harvesting it yourself. Um, yeah, those are the uses there. This is I I don't use this as an antimicrobial, but this came up in China. The verbena um, officinalis. They're starting to use in China, and I don't remember the specific reference, but this is our verbena literalis called Haui, very, very close to the, the common vervain. And um, this is definitely worth doing some research on and finding out. This is Uhaloa. This is one of our rock star antimicrobials in Hawaii. It's, in, it's indigenous, not endemic, meaning it also grows in other places. Um, but um, this is really good stuff. Now this is a native, so I would encourage you not to over harvest this. And I almost never harvest the roots anymore. I just, I'll, I'll clip it and keep the plant alive. Um, the roots were, tip, were traditionally used for sore throat, but um, Kumu Dane Silva uses uh, this as a, um, he, he makes an oil out of this and, and you can actually eat it too. And this has a lot of quercetin in it. Um, but this is a really good antimicrobial. The Hawaiians would chew the root bark for sore throats. And um, there was a study in the 80s that this inhibited HIV protease, but I never heard anything else about it. So I don't know that it ever went anywhere with that. But um, yeah, this is good stuff. Um, but again, a native, so harvest it carefully. 
they just changed the family from the the cacao family to the Malvaceae family, to the Malvas, the hibiscus family. This is a Youngia. I haven't used this a lot because there hasn't been much of it around, but it's called Hawksbeard, and this is used as an antimicrobial in China, so. Good. So, one of the things that happens in COVID-19 is you, um, the cilia are destroyed. And I've read that the Bidens is used to, to help the cilia, but I don't know if that's true. Um, the cilia are destroyed in the lungs. The cilia are hairs that push mucus up, up the bronchi so we can expectorate it. Um, so there's two kinds of expectorants I'm gonna talk about. There's regular expectorants and then there's moistening expectorants. Um, and you can look at both, but I know the Chinese now are using moistening expectorants um, to, for people where, the, where they want to get the phlegm up out of the lungs. And it's very traditional. So these are the ones that uh, the local plants that I would use for that. Oh, I didn't, oh dear. This is Coronopus didymus. I didn't, um, C-O-R-O-N, O-P-U-S. D-I-D-Y-M-U-S. It's called Laucane. I didn't get a label on this. Um, this is also a brassica. It grows um, at elevation and good stuff. Uncle Bill used this for his lung problems when, when, when he was alive. And you can eat it. It's called uh, swinecress, I believe. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. This is watercress which is nasturtium, a type of nasturtium, nasturtium is the genus. Um, this is also a, a good expectorant, you can eat it. You have to be careful you, um, of this in the wild because it can have liver flukes. So I would probably get it from a hydroponic place if I was gonna eat this. Uh, this is Plukea, um, Plukea indica. The, my Hawaiian teachers never use this, but this grows down by the ocean, in, by in, the, in the salty areas. And um, this is used um, for digestive problems, but also indirectly from Chinese thinking as an expectorant, because sometimes when you have lot, large amounts of copious phlegm, the Chinese will treat the digestion for that rather than the lungs. It's, it's a little bit complicated. There's another picture of that. And nasturtium, this you could also use as an antimicrobial. And this is edible and this is awesome. Um, it tastes spicy. You can eat the leaves and you can eat the flowers, um, but it's, it's not a bad antimicrobial. And um, yeah, and it tastes good, who knew, right? Tangerine peel are used to harmonize formulas, but especially mandarin orange, uh, mandarin tangerines, yeah, the, yeah, the mandarin orange. Um, and the, yeah, so that, that's, that's something you can include. I will include in many formulas as a harmonizer to harmonize the formula. And then of course our friend ginger. Now you could have put ginger in the antimicrobial or the inflammation or this stuff is really underrated. This is a very, you know, things that we see commonly, we don't always appreciate, but this is really, I call it a Swiss army plant. It kind of does everything. So, and there's the information on ginger. So moistening expectorants, that's when you want to, um, you want to add, like if the phlegm is really sticky and stuck, you want to add a certain amount of moisture so that it helps it come up, it loosens it up. And these are the plants that might, that are well, traditionally used to do that. Uh, coconut water is awesome. It's moistening and cooling, increases. Uh, this is one of our rock stars. This is also an antimicrobial, also used for fever. You can, if you prepare it right, you can eat it. Um, it's, you, you can, you snap it apart and there's a sap inside. It's just, so I'll use that, that the, um, what I will do with that is um, you can mash it up and make it into a tea. Don't boil it too long. Um, you can also cut it into pieces put it in a blender with water, um, like a Vitamix, turn it on, 
strain it, pull the plant material out, and then you can use that as a soup base. So you could use that with kudzu or with, yeah, or and with sweet potato leaves, you can add that in and then you can just cook with it. And um, it's, it's one of those, what's one of our wonderful food herb combination things in Hawaii. Um, so it's, it's very moistening and very cooling. So anytime you have sticky phlegm in the lungs, you have um, a bladder infection, we get that hot burning, that stuff will get into the bladder and come out and soothe and cool. Um, kidney stones, when the, when the stone is coming down and scraping the, the ureter. So good stuff. There's another picture of a different, uh, it's probably a different species, but same. That. Low quad is a really good moistener for the lungs. Um, you can make a syrup out of it. If you're gonna use the leaves, the, the, um, the Chinese call this pipaye. If you're gonna use the leaves, it grows around here uh, at elevation. I'm at about, what am I, about 3,200 feet here. It grows right at this elevation. Um, you want to either put it in a bag when you boil it up or rub the hairs off the back because there's hairs on the back of the leaf and they'll get into your gut. Um, yeah, and then, you know, the, the fruit is, is delicious and it's really good at moistening the lungs. Great for smokers, anybody, um, yeah, anybody that has dry cough or anything like that. Fennel also is, um, oh, that's not actually a moistening expectorant. That should be up with the, the other expectorants. But um, yeah, fennel is, is good. And I did see something about fennel and COVID-19, but I don't remember what it was. Hibiscus, uh, you can eat the flowers. This hibiscus or the, um, the how, either one. Actually, pretty much any hibiscus. The flowers are edible and they make really good expectorants. Um, so you can eat them, you can make, if you make them into tea, don't boil them too long. Um, great. This Malva parviflora. So the, the, the hibiscus, this hibiscus and this one are all in the same family. They're all um, Malvaceae and um, all Malvaceae tend to be, or most Malvaceae tend to be cooling and soothing to the tissue. Um, this is edible, it's, you can eat the leaves, it's a little hairy, so I'm not too crazy about it, but you could also make this into a tea and um, yeah, for as an expectorant. And this is Malvastrum, I didn't label this either. This is another Malvaceae, Malvastrum, that you can use, same as the others, you know. On this one, you can use the whole plant. So in the hibiscus, these two hibiscus, I would just use the flowers, and on these, I would use the whole plant. Uh, mondo grass, this grows around all kinds of corporate buildings in Hawaii. The, I've never harvested this, I buy it from China, but the roots of this are used to um, moisten the body. And this is also a potential expectorant. Prickly pear are awesome. They are, this is some of the finest medicine we have in Hawaii. You can gather the, the flowers and dry them and then use them a really good um, expectorant, um, moistening expectorant for the lungs. You can take the pads and you can, um, you can eat what's inside. They call them um, uh, nopalitos, nopales or nopalitos in, in um, Spanish speaking countries. You can mix it with eggs. Um, that slime in, in, in both the flowers and the slime in the pads are really good at stabilizing blood sugar. Um, yeah, so there's a certain way to, to, when you're gathering the pads, what I'll do is I'll grab them with a pair of tongs and I torch the, the spines off them with a, with a plumber's torch. Um, when I was in uh, Texas, Sam Coffin would just rub them on stones, but he's a better man than I am. I won't do that. So I torch them. And then um, you can you can peel the outside of the skin, and that is that's really wonderful. Better than aloe for burns or anything. Better than yeah, it's it's a better um, better gel than aloe. More healing. Plantain. So these two are both called loca laukahi. Um, this is I always say if you don't know what else to give somebody, give them laukahi because it won't hurt them. And um, we make chips out of these ones, the Plantago Major. So this is Plantago Major. 
And uh, this is Plantago Major here and Plantago Lanceolata, but they use the same. We will eat these, we make chips out of them. And, um, but this is, these are good expectorants and they do a ton of other things that I don't have time to get into. But um, this is another Swiss army herb. There's another picture of plantain, Lanceolata. What's that? Mullen grows here, not on Maui, but it grows on the big island. Um, in the drier areas, and that's an excellent moistening expectorant. Great lung herb. Uh, the flowers, if you can get them. Okay, so how are we doing? Everybody all right? I think we should pause for some questions. Okay, great. Let's pause. That was a lot of questions. Yes, okay. lots of data. <laughs> cool. So I'm going to scroll up a little bit. Okay. And let's see. So we had, oh, the format changed, I'm sorry. So one of the questions was about um, whether or not- Who's got, the got their microphone on? Oh, okay, good, thanks. Okay, so one of the questions is um, whether or not nasturtium is okay to harvest from the wild. And then um, Stacy made a really good point that it, it should be okay, but to somebody's, steer clear from roadside. mic is on, huh? Uh, Galaxy 50 S9, is your mic on? I can't seem to turn it off. Oh, that's, who's Galaxy S9? Um, hold on, uh, one second. Okay, is that a little bit better? Yeah. Is there less? Okay, cool. Um, okay, sure. So, oh yeah, it might be your microphone when I'm speaking. We'll see. Um, so anyway, so maybe you want to address um, kind of protocols around harvesting in the wild. There's a question of whether or not nasturtium is good in the wild. Is it good near roadsides? You know, that kind of thing. Oh, that's a good point. I won't go around protocols because that's, um, that's a whole other class, but... Um, I won't go around spiritual protocols, but yeah, no, um, generally not on the road. I forgot to mention that. Thank you so much for asking that. Not on the road. Um, uphill from the road is usually okay if it's not heavily trafficked because the oil will, will get on the road and come down in, in a rainstorm and oil from the cars. Um, yeah, just, um, it's terrible because all the Bidens here in, in, in Kula grows right on the roadside. So if something is up on the road and um, up off the road and it's, yeah, even up a berm, even like, I don't know, like three or four feet, I, I, if it's not well trafficked, I'll sometimes harvest that. But yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. and, the, okay. and these are almost all aliens, so don't worry about taking them all. <laughs> you know, it's like... <laughs> Don't worry, it's okay. This is not the mainland. You can take these away. So. <laughs> right on. Um, okay, and then a question on processing hibiscus flower. Um, do you, we want to use the entire flower or just the petals? Oh, I use and maybe the differentiation. Flower. Of... Yeah, I use the entire flower. Okay, any kind of hibiscus. It's my understanding. I've never. Yeah, I, I'll, I, I will. I mean, I'm not saying that none of them are poisonous, but I've never come across one that wasn't edible. So I like now, now Uhaloa is in the hibiscus family and I wouldn't eat Uhaloa flowers. So, so, but generally, yeah, I don't know of any, um, that's a very safe family. That and the gingers tend to be very safe. Great. Cool. Um, so at this time, everyone, if there are any other questions that I missed or something fresh on your mind, you can go ahead and type it um, before we move on. Oh, right. Yes. Low quat syrup. Um, is that something that we want to make from the leaves or from the flower or I mean, from the fruit or from the flower? I think it's made from the fruit, but I'm not sure. But the Chinese will use both the fruit and the leaves for um, for dry lungs. Okay. Yeah. 
Good. I think that's about it then. All right. You know, I was blaming somebody for their mic being on. Cool. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, one more. Um, so talking about field mallow uh, being a good antibacterial, how do you prepare it? Just make it into a tea. To... I just make it into a tea, yeah. Now, I forgot to mention about that, the field mallow, the, um, the roots are, that's the Cedarumbifolia, I think, right? The, um, the roots are, um, have ephedrine in them. So, and even if I have more than two cups of the tea at night, even from the leaves, I will get insomnia. So there may be a tiny bit of ephedrine in the, ephedrine's a stimulant. So, and there's not a lot of ephedrine in them, but um, yeah, what I'll do is I will, um, I will strip off the, um, the leaves and the, um, and the buds and just throw it into a cup. And you need quite a bit to make a cup of tea, but yeah. Great. Oh. That was good. So did you see the, the last question or did you just answer oh, okay. it already? <laughs> um, ratio of so, herbs to water. Thanks, Jill. Um, <laughs> I just do it to taste. You know, when I'm making Chinese herbs, everything is exact and stuff. When I'm making Hawaiian herbs, just throw it in and throw a bunch of water in. And, you know, if it, if it tastes too weak, I'll, um, I'll cook it longer or add more herbs. If it tastes too strong, I'll add more water. So, yeah. Yeah, the, you know, the Chinese measure things in my, um, my Hawaiian teacher would talk about poho, which is like a, it's a, it's a little, um, like a, a divot, it's like a handful is a poho. And, oh, how much? Three poho, three poho, like that, in a pot, or five poho, like that. So, yeah, just make sure it tastes like someone. Oh, um, freezing to kill the pathogens. Thank you, Marsha. I don't know. I'm not actually positive it does kill the pathogens, but that's my understanding. Um, I couldn't imagine a virus living through freezing, but I could be totally wrong. And I, I bought this before the whole COVID-19 thing came, so I'm not terribly concerned about it. But, you know, the thing about freezing plants, too, is when, when you're making herbal tea, you, you want to crack open the, the plant cells. And um, the, whole, the Chinese do that by what's called a military boil. They'll bring something to a rolling boil, especially with roots. But um, but you can also freeze fresh plants and that will crack open the cell walls. And that's another way of extracting the mana from the plant, so. Okay, let's move on here. So sedatives, so um, obviously, you know, I've been a, I've been a total stress monster. Um, which is interesting considering home, considering I'm sitting home doing nothing all day, but um, this is, yeah, so it's something to think about. There are a phenomenal number of pathways in which stress is not good for us. I mean, we were designed to have stress if we're running from a, if we're swimming away from a shark, that's when we should have stress. But this constant day long stress is really, really bad on multiple levels. It increases um, insulin production, increases the absorption of carbohydrates. It, it, it literally can take you down a path to diabetes stress. Um, so, um, so I'm including some sedatives here that you can use. Um, and again, exercise is one of the best ways to calm down to exercise and um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of little tricks here. So Genevieve, you can private message me too, if you want to, when, when, if you have something to say, I guess I miss it. So this is called Gila Gila. This is Mimosa Pudica. This needs to be boiled because it will cause hair loss. If you don't, there's a chemical in it called Mimosine. Um, but this is a really nice sedative. You, what I'll do is I'll get rubber gloves this is the one that closes. Now there's another plant that looks like this, um, which does not close. That's not the one we want. Okay, so make sure you're identifying. This has thorns, and the, um, it has these pomade leaflets and they close when you touch them, okay? Has a purple flower. The lookalike has a yellow flower, no thorns and it doesn't close. That one you do not want to make as tea, okay? So yeah, this is, um, 
This is really a nice sedative. And what I'll do is I'll get some leather gloves. It's a terrible pest, it's nasty stuff. And um, I will, I have these really long leather gloves. I'll gather it, I'll roll it up into a big bundle, like a, like, I think about as that big, like a softball size. I'll take two of those and or bigger like that and throw it in a pot. And you need to boil this um, to break down the mimosine. So you, I'll boil it for at least half an hour, 45 minutes. And um, I actually tincture this too. And when I tincture it, if I just tinctured it the way it was, it wouldn't take out the mimosine. So I will um, boil it. Then I add an equal amount of 95% alcohol to bring it to full strength tincture. So uh, information on mimosa. This is kava. This is a rock. This is a, a rock star for stress. Really good for stress. Um, if you, you know, the my the there was some concerns about it being liver toxic. But that's because they were using the wrong part of the plant. You just use the rhizome. But something to note here. I don't know if you can see, but see the veins in this leaf. They come out like a palm. Everybody see that? All the veins come back to the, the belly button here, the pico, like that, okay? This plant is a look-alike, but see the veins come out of the spine? So this is called palmate venation. This is ava, this is kava kava. This is called pinnate venation. This is not kava, okay? So if you're gathering this, you wanna gather this one and not this one. Now this is also medicinal, but um, I'm, I don't know how it's used. I don't have much information on it. So I wouldn't use this. But this is in the pepper family, by the way. But kava is really good for um, any kind of anxiety. And, um, and there's a lot of clinical trials on this for anxiety. Works very well. Um, yeah, it's also used for bladder infections. It's topical for pain. Okay. It's one of the best, one of our best herbs for, for bladder infections. So other plants. Um, aloe is useful in the sense that um, the gel in hand sanitizers. So I would, you know, I haven't done this, but to uh, make the hand sanitizers stick longer, if you were to take the clear spring, which is 95% alcohol, and add 30% aloe gel to that, you'd have a really nice hand sanitizer. So, okay. So any questions about plants so far? Because we're about to go into some esoteric stuff. Oh, can you use the roots of the leaves? Don't, you, well, I wouldn't use, I cannot, don't use the, don't use the leaves. Okay. That's all I'm going to say. There's um, my Hawaiian teachers would use the leaves for menstrual cramps, but um, ever since that thing came out, that was they used the the stems and the leaves, and that's what caused liver failure. So I would not recommend that. There are a number of plants that my Hawaiian teachers would use that I don't use. So, including popolo, the Solanum americanum, um, which might be a good antimicrobial, but I don't know. So. Uh, yeah, so just use the, the roots of the ava, the uh, rhizomes. And do you ever burn plants to prepare them? Like spagyrics? Or... No, but I, I know Brian does. I think Brian does. Brian, do you use spagyrics? Um, there are people that do that. There's other people on the island that do that too, I think. Uh, no, I don't. I don't. How many cups of tea do you drink of the sleeping drops? Um, Oh, you can drink a couple. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not, you know, it's not a quaalude. It's just like a, it's a mild sedative. So it's a mild relax. Oh, I'm showing my age, aren't I? What's a quaalude? Never mind. Um, you can drink it until it works. <laughs> until you feel sleepy. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's not a problem. Oh, and with kids, you want to, you obviously want to moderate your dosage. You don't give them an adult dosage. Do it by weight, so. All right, good, so onward.
So um, now th this is what this is what I am giving to friends and family. Okay, these are Chinese herbs, so I'm, um, they're they're not going to seem familiar, but I'm including it just so you know. These are the formulas that I've come up with. I've I've um, talked to friends of mine all over the country who are herbalists, and I've I've referenced stuff from China, and I refer reference the scientific literature, and I'm not saying you should do this, but this is just FYI, this is what I'm giving. So this is what I call plan A. Um, these top three herbs are from a formula, a traditional formula called Jade Screen, Yuping Feng San. And these are, um, the Chinese use this to strengthen the Wei Qi to fight against, um, fight against pathogens. The next two, oh, this herb is uh, Baikal skullcap. We talked about that before. It, it interrupts those pathways, and the Chinese are using this a lot with um, with um, with COVID nineteen. And the reason I included it here in the first stage is because this also um, increases melatonin in the body, which is interesting, as does feverfew. So again, I don't know if melatonin is, is useful in terms of blocking COVID-19, but, um, um, but that's, I, that's my approach. These two herbs are um, very famous Chinese herbs. You've probably heard of yin chow, the, the patent medicine. This is yin, this is chow. These are the two main herbs in there and they're used for viral infections. So normally the Chinese would only use these three herbs but because this is so devastating to, to strengthen the body, they are adding in these other herbs to just as a kind of a hedge against in case somebody gets sick. Um, this is uh, an herb for the gut. Now, you know, Western herbalists, um, the Chinese first started releasing the herb formulas they were using. They were using a lot of stuff for digestion. And the Western herbalists are going, that's insane. This is a lung issue. What are they doing? Well, it turns out that this, um, that the patients that um, vomiting and diarrhea and digestive problems are often the first symptoms of COVID-19. And there's a school in Chinese medicine called the Earth Nourishing School, which means you take care of the digestion first. Your gut flora is the most important. Well, it turns out some studies I've seen that when, when, the, when somebody's gets um, the disease, COVID-19, and they have digestive problems like vomiting and diarrhea, they don't tend to do as well as people that show up with just lung infect, lung problems. So, so the Chinese are now including a lot of things for digestion. And these three are harmonizers. Um, this is uh, mandarin, mandarin orange peel, citrus, um, tangerine peel. This is fresh ginger and this is licorice. And again, the ginger and the licorice we talked about in those pathways. So, um, so this is a, uh, but this is also to make it so that, it, that you can digest the whole thing. So this is all about, if you're feeling healthy, you take something like this, okay? Now I'm, I will modify these formulas as time goes by. If I get more information, I'm gonna change this, but this is what I'm doing right now, okay? And then this is plan B. And this is in case somebody starts getting sick. Like I, um, this morning I felt my, I felt I was getting some mucus in my throat and I got a little, I get a little frightened. So I started taking plan B and I, um, I did a steam with the rosemary essential oil and it, it instantly I felt better. I don't know why, but it was just like, it was instantly, I, I just get really good results with the steaming in the lungs and stuff. Uh, this is the same Baikal skull cap we talked about. This is the Asatis, the one, um, the three of these, actually all four of these. Oh, this is a mistake. This should be two, oh, my bad. Um, all four of these um, are some of the main herbs they're using in China. This is the Baikal skull cap, the Asatis, the Polygonum cuspidatum, I don't know if you remember, I showed you our local polygonum. No, I have no idea if they have the same effects or not, but let me see if I can find it. This one, 
that's our that's our local version of that. I don't know if they're functionally the same or not, but um, this is a very commonly used herb for the lungs for any lung problems. These two, Chenwafen and Gualo Ren, are used for um, their moistening expectorants. That's what we were talking about before. Um, to moisten the lungs. Actually, all three of these are somewhat moistening expectorants. This is, these are for the digestion, again, for the, they're, and they're specifically for, especially for patients that have, have, have um, diarrhea and vomiting. This is astragalus, it's very famous. Um, this is, I added this um, because this is, I don't know if it was the research or the Chinese, but they're using this a lot, the Sephora, it's a legume. This is a philodendron, a very famous yellow um, called, this is, this is the middle yellow, this is the lower yellow. Uh, no, this is the upper yellow, I'm sorry, this is the lower yellow. And then Biden's Alba, we talked about that, that's the Spanish needle, remember the local plant? And then these two are harmonizers. So, so that's what I'm giving my peeps. All right. Any questions? So Ruthie is asking if Tianhua Fen and Gaolo Ren are this have the same Latin name. Yes. They're different. Yeah, Tianhua Fen is the root and Gualo Ren is the um hi Ruthie is the um Gualo Ren is the um the seed. Um, I, I kind of have a question. Um, what do you think about our local eucalyptus? Is this something that we want to steam in water? Oh, I forgot to mention that. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. Yeah, if you, uh, you know, if you get, uh, we have bay leaves here on the property, but if you get eucalyptus, that's a great idea. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if it works, but it, it certainly is going to disinfect whatever's in there. So. Um. And then um, how do you make a steam bath with herbs? Okay, so what, oh, I've only used essential oils, but I would just, um, I would bring the herbs to a boil. Oh, you mean with an herbal formula that you're gonna drink or just with, um, or just with herbs that are aromatic? So far, it seems to be like a steam bath, which I'm assuming is aromatic. Okay, so what I will do is I will take, uh, well, I use essential oils, but you could use herbs. You want to bring the, the water to a boil and then turn the water off and then throw the herbs in. And then you want them to evaporate, you know, and then you maybe reheat it periodically, but and add more herbs. But you want the essential oils to vaporize and get into your, your lungs. And then just to um, extrapolate on that, I have had um, good success putting the herbs in a, in a mesh bag and putting it in like a bathtub if I'm making like a bath oh, awesome. Great. Um, cool. with herbs so that they don't go down the drain. Fantastic, thank you. Um, um, I, I don't use an emulsifier because I've never done it before. So maybe <laughs> maybe you can um, email me and let me know what, what how to do that. I, I, I emulsify my mayonnaise when I make it, when I make turmeric mayonnaise, but... Um, so I'm considering, you know, we could do this again in a week if people have questions or whatever, or I don't know if this is enough or you want more later or whatever, but, um, I can't think of anything else. Genevieve? Sure. <laughs> Joey says, please more. <laughs> um, so you have anything else to add? You were going to talk about sure. on stress? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so. Oh yeah, no, I'm going to post the video, and I'm going to send you a, um, a a copy of all the all the slides that you saw. And yes, be please good use to get more Oh, I'm also I'm going to upload. Um, I have a disc with over 400 plant images that are labeled. And um, I'm going to upload that, and I will let you know uh, when that's uploaded, so you can download that. Is that going to be available on your website? Uh, it'll be available in my Dropbox, but I'll email it to you. Okay, great. 
Um, so one thing, um, does everybody have your email or there, there can be a platform we can set up and uh, maybe everyone can just type Earth, in their email. Earth, let me type it here. Hang on a second. I want to just do regular to everybody. This is my email. It's And then, so everyone can send him an email. We can add you to an email list. My website is, yes, earthmedicineinstitute.com. And then Joey has one more question about um, the best places to buy herbs online. Are there any shortages you're noticing? And oh yeah, there's, there's definitely gonna be shortages. <laughs> Please don't hoard, you know, there's definitely gonna be shortages. Um, um, I'll I buy from Mountain Rose and from um, Star West, my Western herbs, and I buy my Chinese herbs from a um, a Chinese herb distributor, but uh, but you have to have a license to buy from them. Other than that, I don't know any sort. I mean, there, there's Chinese herbs all over the web, but um, I'm not sure specifically of um, yeah. I use Mountain Rose herbs also. Yeah. All right. Do you want to? Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Mount, Mount, Mountain Rose is closed, right? Closed exactly. at this point. Okay. Good. Cool. Yeah. You want to close out. All right. So thank you, everyone. All right, well, I think there's still questions. Okay. Um, I will. You know, I'm going to. Um, I, I'll send you a copy of the chat too, so you can look up these. My formula. Yes. Uh, my formula A or B is available. You can. You can uh, email me. Okay. Yeah. And especially for the Chinese herb company, Ruthie, for those of you who have the Chinese license, if you can send Ruthie. Oh, I use, I use, type Mei in the... I use Meiwei just because they, they have everything. But, um, you, you know, you've probably give you spring wind, you can go to spring wind or you can go to new herbs. Um, yeah, but I, I just use Meiwei because they, they've, they've gotten their act together over the last 30 years and they're finally doing the right thing. So. Yeah. And um, for Grace, formula A and B is available. Would you like to let them know how it's available? Just, just send me an email. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Oh, um, um, oh yeah. I'm going to um, I'm going to send you the whole slideshow. So everybody's going to get a copy of the whole slideshow, including the formulas. Oh, that's a good question, Janine. Yes, Chinchona um, yeah, is good. On that. I just ordered a couple of pounds of that, um, and I'm going to tincture it. The, so the question is, do you know, do you know anything about um, quinine or chinchona? Yeah, there's some um, the there's anti-malarial drugs that apparently are working for COVID-19, but the re it, it, nobody really knows. Like everything else, nobody really knows, but. Um, I ordered a couple of pounds of that and I'll be tincturing it, um, but I have no information about it. So you probably know as much as I do. Yeah. All right. That's a good Amazonian. Out. All right, so um, um, how about MMS? Uh, I don't know anything about MMS. Uh, absolutely, you can forward the slide presentation. Okay. So yeah, let's close out. And if you have any more questions, you can email me. Good. Sure. And if I can say just one thing to address everyone, thank you all so much for joining us. Um, we had originally planned to um, do a, a really lovely whole weekend of uh, herb gathering in Big Island and had to cancel because of the virus. So we thank you so much, David, for um, offering this free webinar. I think it's really helping everyone to just feel a little bit more balanced in um in what they can do to really empower themselves for health and yeah. i think one of the most important things through this stressful time of of a, of a world you know pandemic we've never really seen before is just to continuously stay centered and um and uh and be calm and fill your lives still with joy i mean we have to stay home but that doesn't mean 
I mean, ideally we're staying home <laughs> and not going out and partying and interacting a lot, but it doesn't mean we can't, you know, call our, our grandparents and, and call our friends and, and really make time to video chat like this and uh, make sure you just fill yourself with joy and release some of that stress because stress can really um, put you at risk Oh, I think almost more than anything, the more you stress about it. So um, we're all here together and it's going to pass. And so again, just thank you, David, for easing some of our minds and giving us some good information how to empower You're ourselves. You're welcome. Um, Galaxy S9, can you text me, Galaxy? Or are you, they, they, he has his hand up. Hang on one second. Yes, Galaxy. I can't unmute you. Sorry, you're gonna to have to email me. I know you got your hand up, but I can't unmute you. Anyway. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Stay safe and stay home, okay? We'll be in touch. All right, good night. Uh, good night.